Hello everyone and welcome to video number 31 part B in our survival game series. In this one we are going to dig straight into the coding of the weapon functionality where we left off in the last video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about go ahead and uh, click the link in the description to watch uh, video number 31 part A. This is again part B. Cool. So as always, I've opened up Unity and uh, you can see that we left off with an error. So if we just open up the weapon script in Mono Develop, there we go. Uh, and the error is caused by a missing parentheses in the if statement with the distance here. So let's just close that up, save it. And if we head out, we should see the error disappearing. If we hit clear, it doesn't. Let's see if I save this properly. Uh, the if distance, oops, wrong if statement. It's in the physics.raycast. There we go. So hit the parentheses there and the arrows disappear. Awesome. So for now, we have taken care of the damaging, the raycast shooting, the delay. And uh, we have just used the animator down here. And now we are going to take care of the animation. And uh, this is a little tricky since we want it to be somewhat random which uh, hand our character uses to hit the target with. Uh, but we still want to have some control over it since uh, a random value tends to send out the same in a cascade of sometimes three to four to even five uh, times in a row so that we will have the right hand punching a bunch of times before the left hand starts going and that's really unnatural. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the hit one streak and the hit two streak to <clears throat> set a limit to how many times one hand can hit before the other ones come in action. So. In the function attack damage, we'll make a new chapter before the yield wait for a second statement. And in here we'll type if random dot value is less than or equal to 0 0.5 and use two of these and symbols and hit 0 streak is less than or equal to 2. Like that. Then we want something to happen. So let's open up the bracket keys and in here we want to type the animator dot set bool. And this is for boolean. As I explained in the last video, this will allow us to change a property inside of the animated window so that we can have the animations play. And we're going to type hit one and it's going to be true. So we want to hit something. And the cool uh, thing about this is that it will automatically stop playing uh, whenever it has finished the animation because that's something we set up uh, inside of the controller. Okay, cool. So below this, we want the hit zero streak to be plus equals one. So we want to increase it by one every time we hit. And we want the hit two streak to be equal to zero because now we have just hit with our right hand. And so our left hand streak goes back to zero. If these requirements aren't made, Mit. We want to do something else. So type else and then open up the bracket keys. And inside of those, we type if hit two streak is less than or equal to two. And the brackets. There. Uh, then we want the animator dot set bool with the variable hit zero two to be true. Meaning that if uh, we have a value of less 
<coughs> of less than 0.5 or or our hit streak um, has been uh, has been reached its maximum its maximum number we want to go down here and we want to find out if our hit two streak has hit it had hit, has hit its limit and if it hasn't we want to play the hit two animation and then we want the hit one streak to be equal to zero and the hit two streak to be equal plus equals one so and uh, if these requirements are met opened up the brackets so else bracket keys then we want the animator dot set ball this is a lot of boring coding hit one to be true and we want of course the hit one streak you guessed it to be plus equals one because now we are hitting with our right hand again and we want the heroes the hit two streak to be equal to zero because the streak has ended and that should pretty much be it let's go ahead and finally try this out and we can see we have zero errors which is quite impressive and uh, if we go ahead and select the player go on the main camera arms arm armature master in arm right arm right hand right hold right melee and then fists uh, we can see that our weapon script is attached and now we can go ahead and adjust just these values uh, just to how we want them so the distance that set that to uh, the distance here that should be private I think could easily make that private let's go ahead and hit play and something is not working Let's see, the game freezes. I'll just quickly go ahead and pause the video and then be back in a sec. Okay, so we can see down here that it says we have an unassigned reference exception. The variable of the animated weapon has not been assigned. So what we simply need to do is we need to go to the animated variable here and we need to select our arms five. This is because we want to access the animator in order to play animations. Now we can hit play again. And it should be working. And whenever we hit something, you can see that it plays a random animation. And if the streak gets up to two, it will shift to the other hand. This makes the hitting feel random, but it's still inside of control range. So that's really awesome and we can see the distance changing just right and we can uh, therefore we can easily adjust the max distance by using a pole like this we can go up and say hey we want to hit at this distance we can click it and we can observe that the distance now is 0 0.98 and therefore we might want to change the max distance of the hitting to something like 0 1.3 uh, just to go a little over overboard. I will leave it at 1.5. It's really up to you The damage delay is something you can also go ahead and adjust I'll just show you a quick and easy way to adjust this and that's done by going into our weapon script here and then whenever uh, We want to adjust this we can just make a debug.log statement right after the wait for seconds saying hit and therefore we can observe just when the debug.log statement appears so that we can make it time there that's actually pretty close the debug.log statement is a little delayed and therefore we can go ahead and bump down the damage delay just a tad let's just try 0.4 and there we have it. I think that's pretty well synchronized. And now we can go ahead and delete that again. So that's a great way to, uh, a great and simple way to sync up the damage delay with the uh, animations. You can of course go ahead and attach other weapons. Uh, I'm definitely gonna make a video 
in the near future showing you how to set up weapons for the inventory system and we are going to be using them and uh, the animation should work just fine with them too. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I'll just finish up by making some of these unnecessary variables private. So private the hit one streak, private the hit two streak and private the distance. We really don't need those. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video.